How can the American people ever trust Congress after learning of the rampant insider trading that has been going on? Well, that's a good question. How can they do that? Um, when you really think about how much insider trading information uh, people benefit from the government, from knowledge uh, with stock trades, it's wild. But nobody says anything at the SEC, no, no, because they are, you know, part of the club. You know, they are the, you know, it, it, it's funny, you know, um, th this is an article from the American Dream. And I'm going to just take a, a couple of excerpts from it that just says it. Um, when, when we, if we were to do this stuff, we'd of course go to jail, you know, but no. Um, U.S. Senator Dick Durbin sold $74,715 worth of stock on September 17th and $42,000 worth of stock on September 18th. And Schweitzer says the, uh, this is the writer, that U.S. Representative Jim Moran sold off 90 uh, shares in 90 different corporations on September 17th. And they got this insider information prior to the uh, uh, banking uh, the banking collapse of, uh, that they had here in uh, 2008. Interesting. So on September 16th, Paulson and Bernanke held closed doors meetings. These people all dropped their stocks the next day. <laughs> and everybody else crushed. Oh, I love it. I just love it because now you can look at that. That's a great article. I exp I'm not going to read it. It's too long, but it's just awesome. There's so many good points. It's from the American Dream on Tuesday, uh, November 15th, 2011. How can the American people ever trust Congress again after learning of the rampant insider trading that's been going on? Unreal. Well, speaking of this insaneness, what about MF Global uh, stealing $600 million or $900 million worth of gold of customers that they've been holding? And now the gold that they gave to J.P. Morgan Chase, those criminals, uh, disappeared. It vanished. We don't know where it is. Oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Incredible. And these are customers' funds that were transferred out of MF Glo Global in a wave of suspicious trades. Oh, yeah. I bet they were suspicious. Oh, my God. The missing 600 million was, uh, oh, 600, actually not, up to 900 million, uh, Fox, uh, Fox Business actually reported. And citing a report in the Wall Street Journal, discovered that about 659 million of its customer aggregated accounts resided in an account at, at uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. Interesting. And where's the missing money? They just move money around. These criminals, they're such criminals. It's just unbearable. I don't know how they uh, how they get away with it. And then this other guy, this bankster, he uh, f in f he fraudulently churns or or s he's a banker, fraud fraudulently uh, steals account money, sets up a a whole shell corporation, does all this, you know, you know movie type shit, all right, and gets caught, one point seven million. It's two years in jail. Well, what about the money? He gets two years in jail. Now, who wouldn't go to jail for two years, no matter how bad it would be, if you knew when you got out, you'd get $1.7 million? I think anybody. We're sort of in jail, aren't we? Aren't we sort of enslaved anyway? Think about it. You're not enslaved at whatever you do. Do you really love your job, unless you own your own business and, own, and found your own way and... If you work for somebody else, making them hundreds of thousands while they pay you maybe fifty, sixty thousand dollars or whatever they pay you, does that make you feel good? I don't know. It doesn't make me feel good. Especially when criminals like MF Global steal people's gold with JP Morgan and the other Illuminati elite who are, you know, totally controlling our government. Goldman Sachs boys, all these people. Rothschilds, the Rockefeller interests. Uh, believe me, this is where it is. This is what's doing it. Gerald Chalenti went wild. He has, like, I think a couple hundred grand worth of money that just vanished. He's going absolutely insane. Trends forecaster Gen Gerald uh, Chalenti. Uh, where you go to trendsjournal.com, uh, uh, trends research journal, uh, 
dot com. Uh, you can you can uh, subscribe. It's a great journal and it tells you what's going on and you can really be heads up on what's going on. But you can't really o ever really know if criminals like this are going to steal your money. And they swear they'll give you back your money. They'll guarantee you all your money. But then when you lose it, you lost it, and all those uh, bargains are off. It's happening right now with MF Global looted customer accounts via internal bank run. And that was reported by uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Infowars.com. This is an article from Reuters. Uh, the SEC is targeting low-level bankers. Yeah, like I said, this guy, this little guy with his, t and they, they target him. Yeah, that's true. But they give him a little slap on the wrist, a couple of years in jail, and you keep your money. But also, the U.S. government is um, what they're doing with the uh, Security and Exchange Commission is that they, um, if a trader engages in misconduct, the SEC can sue the manager uh, with failure to supervise. But in some of the biggest cases, the SEC has brought in recent months against uh, J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup, which, which again are all these are all the collectivist criminals. The agency has sued only low-level bankers, not the pyramid Ill Illuminati elite. Of course not. Of course not. And this is reported by Aruna Viswanth Viswantha, excuse me, Aruna Viswanatha on November 16th in Reuters. SEC targets low-level bankers, yeah. So the government, of course, is not going after, I mean, how could, it would be like it's your own company and you're going to, like, prosecute yourself. Think about it. Because that's what it is. These criminals have hijacked our government. That's why I'm here every Friday from 1 to 3 and every uh, Saturday from 3 to 5 here on informedradio.com. Uh, this is where uh, we can talk about things like uh, anything, whatever's on your mind. Some days it's just like, it's just I, you, I can't even believe how corrupt it is and people just, oh, I don't care. But meanwhile, if you just have a couple of drinks, you know, you slide off the road maybe once, you know, you know, in, in your whole life, you know, you're put through this system and, you know, maybe it happens twice. Oh my God, then you then you're gonna be you're gonna be hit with heavy fines and it stays on your license and you gotta do two hundred hours of community service. And I'm not kidding. This is like depending on where you live, it's really it's hardcore. And and there's a lot of other these little small bullshit laws that they have. I mean, we're not talking about people that are that are hammered. We're talking about, you know, somebody that's got like point nine and it's point eight. You know, they lower the limits to make everybody safe, but it just causes more people to be to be considered drunk. Anyway, whatever. I guess people don't see it that way, and that's I guess how the mind control works. So that's why I'm here. Hey, give us a call. I don't know. Uh, let, let's hear what you think. Um, talking about a lot of different things, as I always do. Um, give me a shout. 772-905-3018. Let's hear what you've got to say. This is Howard Nima, and you're listening to We Are Change. And uh, I can't believe that uh, it seems that these bankers, like Goldman Sachs and, and the others, are taking over Europe. I mean, uh, they got the whole thing. you got this... Uh, Berlusconi's out, and this other criminal has been put in place there, another globalist, uh, Mario, uh, whatever his name is, Draghi, and it's just it's insane, you know, they're just, they're just taking it over. But it makes sense because the uh, EU's architects never meant it to actually be a democracy. So what that means is that uh, the new Greek prime minister, for example, uh, Lucas Papadimos, was the man who was head of Greece's central bank, fiddle the figures to uh, enable Greece to get into the euro. And this is, of course, against the rules, because this is part of, this is how collectivism works. So they keep uh, taking all of these things, you know, continuing to uh, uh, consolidate all of their power by, by, basically by fraud and manipulation. It's like endless fraud and manipulation, and over and over again. Um, it's just really crazy. It's just unbelievable. The League of Nations, uh, the, the idea of, uh, of this entire uh, banking consolidation 
was really devised in the twenties with by the bankers of of that age, but it's the same families. It's just like you know, it's like your grandpa, you know, grandpa and grandpa, grandpa and grandma decided to do this, and great grandma, you know, uh, great grandpa. That's a, a, the elite. That's how it is. I mean, they they set this in plan, and now each generation continues moving towards further and further into the new world order. Uh, so the first uh, time that this was actually conceived in the twenties. Uh, was by two senior officials of the League of Nations, Jean Monat and Arthur Salter, a British civil servant, who was a United States uh, of Europe uh, member and ruled by the government and unelected technocrats like themselves. So they they just they they put all this information in place and to th and and they they just say how it is. You know, this is it, and they they control it and they control the, the technology. They use technology to manipulate and get what they want, and uh, that's how it is. So the two things that were uh, an anathema to them was that the nation states with the power of veto, which they had seen destroy the League of Nations, and any need to uh, consult the wishes of the people in elections had to be eliminated. So that's what they're working on. This whole idea of uh, getting rid of this veto, getting rid of sovereignty into this one world government. Uh, they're moving closer. Europe's cooked. They're all going to sign on. Everybody's fucked. I mean, there's no other way to look at it. I mean, it's just the truth, you know, that everybody's fucked. Uh, and we're really close. I mean, look, look, what's going on here, this uh, civil unrest that we're having right now is, is really nothing compared to, uh, to what's, what's, what's coming. Uh, this is just, um, as they continue to consolidate and the government is going to continue to have to, like, bail people out because they're going to, Fall, in, fall into their little trap uh, if they do or more inflation I mean it's more enslavement I mean this whole system has to change uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not a pretty picture it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better it'll get better because people are going to just not take it they're just going to freak out and there's going to be a lot of problems and um, I'm just fearing that because if it ever turns to like something like really bad and they get into like a martial law thing and it's like that, then uh, once they do that, it'll, it'll never end. Just like these wars will never end. They just won't. It'll just be a normal thing. And they're already moving it in, you know, they're putting, they're already militar militarizing police and moving them into communities and Department of uh, Homeland Security is stopping people on highways now and asking for your papers. And while all this is going on, GE filed 57,000 pages on their tax return and paid no taxes on $14 billion in profits. $14 billion. Can you imagine having $14 billion worth of profits? And uh, it's just unbelievable. It's incredible. Not one dime criminals. <laughs> the fact that GE paid no taxes in 2010 was widely reported. Yeah, I know, we know that. But the size of its tax return first came to light when the House Budget Committee Chairman uh, Paul Ryan made uh, the case for the corporate tax reform. Yeah, they should definitely do that. This is ridiculous. These people are criminals. Who owns GE? Well, again, it's mostly owned by the Rockefeller interests. Uh, <clears throat> GE Capital, all that. Um, <laughs> 14 billion dollars, no taxes, and we all slave for, for whatever we get, and they pull money out of our check. It's beautiful, it's loving. I don't even, if I even know if I have the strength to go through this in the first hour, but there are 35 facts about the gutting of America's industrial might that should make you very angry. And I think I am going to cover that in the next hour after the break. Um, which will be coming up soon. Now, this break that's coming up is going to be uh, very interesting. I have it uh, timed perfectly so there won't be any interruptions. And uh, It's um, a piece with uh, Tom Braden from Crossfire. Uh, he was a CFR minion uh, old, really long time ago. This was from 1983. But it was with uh, Larry P. McDonald who exposed the... Uh, the fact that we're moving towards world government, and he was called asinine. Uh, and it's like a seven-minute piece, and it's amazing.
How can the American people ever trust Congress after learning of the rampant insider trading that has been going on? Well, that's a good question. How can they do that? Um, when you really think about how much insider trading information uh, people benefit from the government, from knowledge uh, with stock trades, it's wild. But nobody says anything at the SEC, no, no, because they are, you know, part of the club. You know, they are the, you know, it, it, it's funny, you know, um, this is the writer, that U.S. Representative Jim Moran sold off 90 uh, shares in 90 different corporations on September 17th. And they got this insider information prior to the uh, uh, banking uh, the, the banking collapse of, uh, that they had here in uh, 2008. Interesting. So on September 16th, Paulson and Bernanke held closed doors meetings. These people all dropped their stocks the next day. This is an article from the American Dream. And I'm going to just take a, a couple of excerpts from it that just says it. Um, when, when we, if we were to do this stuff, we'd of course go to jail, you know, but no. Um, U.S. Senator Dick Durbin sold $74,715 worth of stock on September 17th and $42,000 worth of stock on September 18th. And Schweitzer says the, uh, <laughs> and everybody else crushed. Oh, I love it. I just love it because now you can look at that. That's a great article. I exp I'm not going to read it. It's too long, but it's just awesome. There's so many good points. It's from the American Dream on Tuesday, uh, November 15th, 2011. How can the American people ever trust Congress again after learning of the rampant insider trading that's been going on? Unreal. Well, speaking of this insaneness, what about MF Global uh, stealing $600 million or $900 million worth of gold of customers that they've been holding? And now the gold that they gave to J.P. Morgan Chase, those criminals, uh, disappeared. It vanished. We don't know where it is. Oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Incredible. And these are customers' funds that were transferred out of MF Global in a wave of suspicious trades. Oh, yeah. I bet they were suspicious. Oh, my God. The missing 600 million was uh, oh, 600 actually not up to nine.